You are listening to Christ, Our Bridegroom Written by Eric Gilmore Copyright Eric Gilmore Read by Chloe Elmore Produced by Chloe Voices Once upon a time I lost this heart of mine To the one who hung upon a tree This God who died for me He turned toward the dust and lived without a lust. Rays of glory light, there is no better sight. Now my robes are clean, and I shall see the scene. The throne of God above, Christ the Son of Love. Thank you for kisses divine. Rest in my mind greater than signs. You shimmer and shine. You are better than wine with a heart so kind. I'm pining, mining treasures. I'm finding that you align me with thee as I'm dining with thee. The precious and holy bridegroom who is brighter than the sun. He leaps over mountains of division to pick us up and carry us into himself. Shining with resplendent rays of glory that blind us to everything else. I once asked the Lord what to tell his people and he responded with, Tell them this. Oh, how I love you. Let me count the ways. Tell them how beautiful they are to me. Tell them they are the greatest delight of my heart. Tell them that I desire them and they belong with me. He loves you so much. He watches everything you do. He knows when you stand up or sit down. He is head over heels for you. He cannot love you any more than he already does. And he cannot do any more than he already has. He gave every drop of his blood to show you love before you knew who he was or cared about him. You are the treasure of God. If you could see how much he loves you, you wouldn't even believe it because it is too amazing. You may say, You don't know what I've done. He already died for you. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for you and me. There is no greater demonstration of love that could be given. There is no bridegroom like the bridegroom. Every bridegroom on earth is inferior to the bridegroom of heaven as a shadow is to a man. I am interested more in the enduring than the immediate. Even as God has done many things through the church, public touches must turn into private kisses. If not, this intimacy will fade away. I once wrote this poem after being a part of signs, wonders and miracles. The music is so good and exciting when it peaks, but I prefer what I should, the touch of our cheeks. Silent language in secret, it's you my soul seeks. I look to you to increase it, because I know my love is weak. And words, they're often empty as lies. And I offer to you what can't be heard, with an honest heart and exclusive eyes. You alone are pure, cleanse my mind from wise, Your promises are sure even though creation slowly dies. To study alone is a danger. Your nearness lifts the mud. You put yourself on paper. You gave yourself in blood. Rituals hold no anchor. I need life from above. Principles are a vapor when I can give to you my love. The romance of the ages involves you and the precious, resplendent, glorious bridegroom. 
there isn't a love story even close. Every romantic thing you have ever seen in your life was made to point to someone who is more romantic than anything that can happen in this life. They are all small shadows of this precious God-man who loves you so much. The bridegroom is living water. The spirit and the bride say, Come. And let the one who hears say, Come. And let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires take the water of life without cost. Revelation 22.17 This is where everything is headed. This is the last time the church is ever mentioned in the Bible, and we are described as the bride. A bride means you recognize his place as bridegroom. A bride means that your heart has love for him. A bride means that you have left everything else, all other comforts, pursuits and desires, to find all of them now in him. Bride implies the loss of self in another. And the two will become one flesh, so they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together, let no one separate. Mark 10, 8-9 The loss of yourself in another is a bride. We see in Revelation that this is where we are headed. The Spirit has worked out of the bride all other longings and all other loves, so much so that they have one thing on their heart. You come. It is you that he desires. It is him that we desire. The purified and united bride of the Spirit cries, Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. The cry on the inside to have you in a greater way than I can hear is the cry of the bride. Without a burning Maranatha inside of our blood, we are missing the point. He is coming to swoop us up in his arms. The Spirit has worked in the bride's heart so much that he has planted her in the person of Christ and has uprooted her from everything else in this life. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. The one who hears, Come. And the one who is thirsty, Come. This is referencing Isaiah 55, where we can use this scripture to expound on what is being said by seeing another part of scripture. Scripture interprets Scripture. When you see that the bride is connected to drinking, you can better understand Isaiah 55. You there, everyone who thirsts, and you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk. Without money and without cost, why do you spend money on what is not bread? and your wages for what does not satisfy. Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourself in abundance. Isaiah 55, 1-2 This verse shows a satisfaction issue, and the only requirement for this satisfaction is thirst. Thirst is the recognition of what you need. It is saying, Lord, I do not have in and of myself, but I need, so I look to you as the one who can give it to me. That is what thirst is. So if you, despite being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Luke 11.13 If you ask, you will receive. To ask is to recognize that you do not have. You recognize that you need, and you recognize that he is the only one who can do it for you. It is absolute bankruptcy. Dependency and poverty are the currency of experiencing the living water. If you pour water into a cup, it rushes down to the bottom and fills it up immediately. It rushes in to fill the lowest place. So it is with the Holy Spirit. 
He rushes in to fill those who are dependent and low before him. Those that are dry are too high. There isn't a place for dryness, because we are the bride, and the bride drinks. He fills the lowly. The poor and needy are seeking water, but there is none, and their tongues are parched with thirst. I, the Lord, will answer them myself. As the God of Israel, I will not abandon them. I will open rivers on the bare heights and springs in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land fountains of water. Isaiah 41, 17 to 18. He promises to be gushing out and over upon you. This is what the bride does. The bride recognizes that the groom himself is the satisfier of the soul. The bridegroom is living water. In John, we see Christ, our bridegroom, stand up and say this. Now on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. The one who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. John 17, 37-38 The bridegroom is labeling himself as living water, that which satisfies. He is saying, I am that which satisfies the soul. Christ himself. What is this water that the bride drinks? It is receiving of the bridegroom himself. What imagery. God revealed himself as drink for the soul. Something that is used to quench our thirst. He chose this imagery, not us. He was trying to tell us to be what we receive to satisfy our souls. He fulfills all the longing of our souls. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Go and proclaim in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, This is what the Lord says. I remember regarding you the devotion of your youth, your love when you were a bride, Your following after me in the wilderness, through a land not sown. For my people have committed two evils. They have abandoned me, the fountain of living waters, to carve out for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that do not hold water. Jeremiah 2, 2 and 13. His people committed evil by forsaking him, the fountain. It is an evil thing not to drink from him. If our Christianity is without satisfaction, we know that we have placed the method over the man. If our Christianity is not a drinking in of satisfaction, we know we have replaced the person of Christ with principles. If we are not the satisfied bride, we value our idea of God rather than God himself. He is alive and real, and he quenches the thirst. Living water is beautiful because water is alive and quenches your thirst. I don't understand people who talk about dryness when he is the living water. This is the gospel. This is the gospel. Gushing up fountains in the midst of valleys, in the middle of the wilderness, He is a pool of water. He is the quenching of the thirst. The bridegroom satisfies his bride. Satisfaction is not a side issue. It is the very means by which God frees us and enables us to obey him. He stops all the longings of the soul with himself. Many people live their lives unsatisfied with God not realizing that they are testifying to the world that he is not a bridegroom. If we are satisfied with the world, we tell it that Jesus is not enough. 
we replace the gospel of the all-sufficient person of Christ and reduce it to a system of beliefs that you cannot actually drink. I don't know the last time you looked at a contract, but you cannot drink it. We don't sign on the dotted line saying, this is now what we believe, and then drink that piece of paper. Christ himself alone has made himself edible. He has made himself imbibable. This is important because if we are the bride, the bride has a distinguishing mark that she is satisfied with her bridegroom. She finds all sufficiency in him. A.W. Tozer once said, The tragedy of the church is that from childhood to old age, men have only known a synthetic God, compounded to theology and logic, having no eyes to see nor ears to hear. That is not what we are going to be, because in our hearts we look to the person of the Lord to be satisfaction for us. How long will we seek substance in the land of shadows? How long will we spend money on that which is not bread that cannot be satisfied? You cannot find satisfaction below God. Religion drains us. Health flies away. Wealth makes itself wings. Honor is the breath of men's mouths. And pleasures are bubbles. Jesus Christ alone is pleasure forevermore. The lily of the valley, the purest of all gold, the rose of Sharon, the chiefest among ten thousand. He who is fairest of all the sons of men, he who is altogether lovely and is wholly desirable, I encourage you to seek the bliss that never goes away. This is what the Christian life actually looks like. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. For your love is more delightful than wine. Song of Solomon 1 verse 2. In other words, I yield to your direct, intimate, loving contact by the Spirit repeatedly. His kiss can cure your evil and bring you to his bliss and give you him for whom you sigh, Jesus, your sweetness. His kiss will kill competition. His kiss will kill condemnation. His kiss will kill comparison. And you will be free. When people come to me for counsel, most of the time I ask them, when was your last kiss? A kiss can solve your issues. He plants kisses on your soul like seeds, the bloom and blossom of which is the fruit of the Spirit. Some will say, I'm working on my patience. Throw patience out. Get kissed, and he will be patience in you. He will sow seeds of his person in you, and the bloom and blossom will be his own nature. His kiss lifts us out of ourselves, and we become dead men raised by the sweetness of his mouth. You may ask, what is going on with the world right now? Dead men don't suffer from climate changes. There is a holy complacency that looks like you only wanting him. Many people are unable to experience God because they are clinging to something they want from him. It's better to forget all the things God can do and simply look at him. Some of us are trying so hard to get God to look at something, but we don't even look at him. Jason Upton said, I get so thirsty trying to find your presence that I forget to stop and take your drink. Those that are satisfied are the ones that are led by God because they are freed from the need to have anything else. What is stopping you from being led is that you want something more from him. You have to get fed before you are led. You are looking for a leading, and you forget the feeding. The bridegroom gives himself as the all-sufficient drink. And in the words of A.W. Tozer, when the eyes of the soul looking out 
meet the eyes of God looking in, heaven has begun now upon the earth. John Owens once said, If Jesus is not heaven for you now, he shall not be hereafter. He is heaven itself. You can live down here as they do above, if you do what is done above, which is, look at the Lamb of God. John the Baptist teaches us what ministry looks like when he looks at the Lamb and calls everyone else to do the same thing. The essence of ministry is beholding the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. When you are drinking of the Lord, you begin to say things like, With you I need nothing. I am not looking for answers, explanations or direction. Even my provisions are not a concern. The life of the bride is when you have been lifted and wrapped in the bliss of his person. Will she stay there all the time? She's certainly trying to. With him, there is nothing that you need. Peace, trust, joy and satisfaction are things that are fulfilled with him. Content with his kiss and his countenance. All we have to give is our black, dark, wicked, wounded heart. But you love it so much. He loves us for no reason, but we love him for many. When you are needless, his seeds get into your soul. It is all of the neediness that blocks the seeds from getting in on the inside. But when you are needless, the selfishness, the self-significance and self-gratification become completely unnecessary. No more seeking and searching for this, that or the other. It seems as if nothing else exists. When the glory like a cloud fills the temple, the only thing that can be seen is the cloud. That is what it's like when we come into the manifest presence of the Lord. It blinds you to everything but himself. Robert Murray McShane once wrote, If we are the temple of God, then we are a type and shadow of heaven itself. What does that mean? Here, now, in him, we can experience and enjoy. Vanities vanish, and it seems as if life itself is transcended. You begin to see in your heart that refusing to sin is far inferior to refusing to depart from his presence. It becomes no longer about what you can do and can't do, but about eating and drinking. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like a feast. Matthew 22, 2. Sit down, relax, drink and eat, and as you do, he will work his incredible heart and uproot you from this world and plant you in himself. Everything compared to him disappears, and though he does give many things to us through his kindness, it is as if we have things that are transient or subjugated, things that don't have power over you. David was showered by God with a million gifts on the outside because he knew there was only one thing he wanted within. As you take time to drink of the bridegroom and enjoy the sweetness of his person, You close your eyes and see streams that glisten with the light of his face within you. This is life with the bridegroom. So he came to a city of Samaria called Sychar, near the parcel of land that Jacob gave to his son Joseph, and Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, tired from his journey, was just sitting by the well. It was about the sixth hour. John 4, 5-6 In this verse, Jesus gets tired and goes to a well. Any time a well is mentioned in Scripture, it should spark your attention. The bridegroom is at a well. Moses met his wife at a well. Abraham sends his servant out to find a bride for his son. And the servant finds Rebekah at a well. 
Jacob met his wife at a well. The bridegroom is at a well. There is more here than at face value. Jesus is looking for a bride. Here he is looking for a bride, and he says this, A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. John 4, 7 Give me a drink is the same thing Jacob said to Rachel. Jesus was looking for a bride, for one that will love him and give unto him everything. For his disciples had gone away to the city to buy food. So the Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, though you are a Jew, are asking me for a drink, though I am a Samaritan woman? For Jews did not associate with Samaritans. Jesus replied to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked, and he would have given you living water. She said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where then do you get this living water? You are not greater than our father Jacob, are you, who gave us the well and drank of it himself and his sons and his cattle? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never be thirsty. But the water that I will give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up to eternal life. John 4, 8-14 The bridegroom is living water. Jesus looks at the woman and says, Let me be all of your satisfaction, because if you drink of me, the water will become a well. It springs up into eternal life. It is not that one drink satisfies a man forever, but that to drink him installs a well within. When you drink of the Lord, he is then on the inside, and you can drink of him whenever you wish. If you are dry, then you have forgotten there is a well inside. Whatever you are going through doesn't trump what he has already done for you. Don't put what you are going through above Jesus and what he did. You are a garden spring, a well of fresh water and flowing streams from Lebanon. Song of Solomon 4.15 The bridegroom calls his bride a well of living water. In other words, the bride is the one that has drunk of him, Living water and satisfaction are now in her. We should never let a day go by that we do not drink deeply of him. The Holy Bridegroom has given his limitless self as an installed well of living water. You can be green in every seen area of life. There is no reason to be dry because you have God on the inside. The bride should be the most satisfied the world has ever seen, because she has a bridegroom. Jesus asks the woman at the well in John 4, Where is your husband? She responds, I do not have a husband. And Jesus says, That is your problem. You may say, I have all these problems in my life. You need to marry Jesus. Your problem is that you do not have a husband. The woman had five husbands. That is indicative of searching the world for something that only Jesus can be. Only Jesus can satisfy the soul. Richard Wombrand was a Romanian pastor who was put in prison for 14 years for preaching the gospel, and he was in solitary confinement for seven of those years. He was fed one slice of bread a week, and he was dying slowly. He said that many times he was so worn out that he would try to say the Lord's Prayer, but he would forget the words and simply say, Jesus, I love you. He was asked after getting out if being in prison was hell, and he responded, Oh no, hell is to be without Jesus. 
we knew his caresses and his holy kisses. It was the most beautiful time of my life. That is bridegroom living water Christianity. He will lift you above earth and wrap you into his bliss. Charles Spurgeon once said, Since the road to heaven is heavenly, and the road to bliss is bliss, who will not follow Jesus? My soul, be thou in love with the way, as well as the end, as Jesus is one, as well as the other. In conclusion, Jesus looks at you and says this, Marry me, let me be all to thee, none can be what I can be, give ears to hear and eyes to see, fill your soul with ecstasy, and fill your heart with joy and peace, make eternal wars to cease, and lift you above life's miseries, take you into my victories, and love you now and endlessly. Marry you eternally, present me as one sent to you, mocked and rent for you, blood spent for you, death sentenced to a cross, shame and grave, oh, let me save you again. Only I can mend through the spirit I send. So come to me and be one with me. Give your soul and you will behold and know my Father. Are there any others with affection greater than mothers and deeper than lovers? I will smother your sins away and cover you with my pinions and lay my chest with a quiet rest. I'll end all of your quests, stilled and caressed. I am the best for you. Victory through making you new by a love you have never known, by a substance I alone am, for I am the Son of Man. Turn your heart to him. You have been listening to Christ, Our Bridegroom, written by Eric Gilmore, read by Chloe Elmore, produced by Chloe Voices, If you like what you've heard and have a project that you want voiced, contact Chloe at chloevoices.com.